In today's episode, we're going to compare the Shure MV7 with the Rode Procaster. What's up, fam? Welcome back to Leveling Up. I'm your host, CMH, founder of Startup U, an interactive learning space for entrepreneurs. All right, guys, before we get started, make sure you like this video, hit subscribe, and make sure to hit the bell for notifications. One of the things that we found and the algorithm has proven is that subscribing really doesn't mean much anymore. If you don't hit the bell for notifications, it's unlikely you'll ever see my videos going forward. So please make sure you do both to see more videos like this. Uh, we do these kind of reviews all the time, comparing different microphones and talking about podcast strategies and entrepreneurship. Also, don't forget to leave me a comment below. Let me know which microphone you think is the best. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. This is, uh, I feel like this is a relative comparison. I've actually done um, my Shure SM7B, which is my microphone that I use compared to the Procaster. Now we're gonna compare the MV7. If you wanna hear more videos like this about the MV7, uh, check that, I'm gonna link a couple of them above my head here. Uh, you guys can hear various different comparisons with the MV7. This is Shure's brand new product, as I'm sure you know if you're watching this video. And I'm very impressed with it, right? So right now, I just wanna make sure that you guys know uh, I am running my XLR cable through my cloud lifter uh, into my Rodecaster, right? So that's my soundboard, and then that, that can adjust all my settings there. So I'm going to show you both. I'm going to let you listen to this through the XLR into the Rodecaster Pro through the cloud lifter first, because that's the big boy, you know, top of the line status as far as what you're going to get out of this microphone. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over into the USB-C so you guys can hear that. Uh, to kind of hear the sound comparison, and then we'll plug in the Procaster to go from there. So first thing I'm going to call to to attention here is that with the Procaster, you only have one option, right? You've got the XLR input, and that's it. So you've got a similar problem that you have with the SM7B in that there's not any settings options, but you also can't record directly into a laptop or into a computer, right? You're going to need to go through some kind of recording device like what I have with my soundboard or like something with a Zoom H4n or H6n that will allow for an XLR input. The thing I like about the MV7, one of the things that they've added, and I've talked about this in other videos, is that they added multiple different uses that you can provide, meaning you can use different cords. You can use a traditional USB or can you use a USB-C from your micro USB port in this microphone. So if you're starting out and you don't want to make a big lofty investment in your podcasting gear, you just want to have a really good microphone and then just start recording, this is a great option. The Procaster is awesome. I love the sound quality of this microphone, you know, in particular. Uh, Rode makes a great product. I have no issues with Rode whatsoever. I've used many Rode products. I think they're up there with the other, like the Shures. I think they're really, really good. Uh, but just keep in mind that you've got one option with this. You've got the XLR. So you're going to need all these other pieces of equipment outside of, you know, just the microphone itself. Uh, something else to take note of, and, and I don't know exactly why, uh, Rode did this specifically, but this is a big microphone, right? Like this is, it, it just doesn't, I mean, I assume if you had it sitting on a, a desk stand, it would be right in front of you. I've put it on my mic arm. I've got a PSA one. This is this right here. Um, when I put it in front of me, it kind of like, it just feels wonky. It just doesn't, I don't know. It just doesn't sit the way that I like for it to. Uh, however, one thing to note is that Rode is really good about accessories, whereas sure, not so much, right? So if you look at what I said, uh, all the products I'm going into, the Rodecaster, that's a Rode product, right? I'm going through my PSA1, which is this mic arm, that's a Rode product. Rode is really good about accessorizing, not just providing hardware, not just providing you know actual microphones. So that's something to really keep in mind. That doesn't mean that it's not going to work with a Rode product. It just means that it might be better designed for a Rode product. So, for example, uh, if you look here, I've got this extender piece, right? So it adds a couple inches you know, in addition to the actual PSA1 mic arm. And the reason being is that it won't work because you've got your XLR port right here on this microphone and it just kind of gets jammed up against the mic arm itself. So you have to buy this extender piece. Now, it's a couple dollars, it's not a big investment, but it's still something. So if I use this microphone on my mic arm, uh, I think, actually I wouldn't have the same exact issue that I have with the SM7B, but you kind of sometimes will find that you have to kind of modulate it a little bit or it doesn't work exactly the way that you'd like for it to. So keep in mind if you do expect that you want to accessorize, there are more options with any Rode product. But as far as size, which is what my original thought was here, um, I you know, looking at the size comparison, it's, it's I mean, it's drastic. It's several inches. Uh, it's This is very a very heavy microphone. It just, 
I like it. I don't love it, right? There are other microphones that I've had that, you know, I kind of dig it a little bit more. Something else to consider with this specific microphone too is with the Shure mics, you can talk into pretty much anywhere, right? I can move around and talk here, there, and everywhere. Uh, this is going to pick up sound from any which direction, right? Uh, with Rode products, uh, that's not the case. So you'll see this has a little silver little dot here in the front, and that's to tell you this is the front of the microphone. So if you talk to the back side of the microphone, it, it, you'll hear in a minute, it's, you're not going to pick up audio the way that you would elsewise. Uh, so that's something else to consider. Uh, I think that's not as not a huge deal, but I will tell you this. With my Rode NT, it's the same setup. Uh, I recorded several episodes and didn't realize that my mic was backwards because, you know, it looks relatively the same. And I ended up having to re-record those because I was talking to the back of the microphone. I actually almost even called Rode to tell them something's wrong with your microphone because it sounds terrible. So something to keep in mind that you could get that confused. Uh, but, you know, maybe you look at this, and this is a, a huge bonus in my mind. Uh, Rode does come with all their products pretty typically come with a leather pouch, and that's good for travel. So to me, this is a great travel option. You don't have this harness that goes with it on the, the Shure MV7. So this is, I mean, you're gonna have to travel with this, right? And so there are extra components you're gonna have to travel with. Um, if you've got a basic stand, you know, you could be able to just kind of break it down as a travel stand, and this might be better because you have the pouch, but also this is a more, I think, more conducive to travel. So that's something to consider as well. But I think ultimately it comes down to the sound. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that. I'm gonna switch real quick over to the USB because I want you to, you've been listening to this on XLR. I want you to hear the USB and then I'm gonna swap back to the Procaster XLR so you can hear that as well. So we have a true sound comparison. Okay, so we are now plugged in with a traditional USB into a micro USB on the MV7. Uh, one thing you'll note when you go, when you remove the XLR cord and you go direct with the USB input into the microphone, one thing that you'll see is there's um, these lights light up on the on the underbelly of the microphone of the MV7, which is your you can change your your levels, right? So you can change your audio level of the sound coming in, uh, but you can also change the the uh, sound of the microphone as well, like the level of the microphone in terms of your actual audio, you know, that you're putting into the microphone. Uh, you also have, and I didn't mention this previously, it's worth mentioning. Uh, you also have an audio jack underneath, so you can plug in headphones. So if you are conducting interviews, that's great because you can plug directly in there and then just pop in your ears and you're ready to record. Uh, whereas again, limited options here, all you have is the XLR port, so you would need an additional device to record that audio. I think if you're doing interviews and you don't plan on buying something like a soundboard, this is going to be really challenging for you. Very, very challenging because even if you do have something that you go into as far as a recording device and then you go USB into your computer, you're still not going to have the headphone aspect or you could plug the headphones into like a row or a, I'm sorry, a Zoom H4n or H6n. My wife does that. That's her That's her configuration. I don't think it's ideal. Uh, I would rather have something that's a little bit more, less portable, more stationary. Uh, but it's an option. So you would have that additional aspect. You could just do recordings without headphones at all, albeit you do risk the possibility of their sound coming through and then the reverb picking back up inside of your microphone as you're recording. So that's, as I see it, a little bit of a setback as far as recording is concerned for podcasts. Um, so that's something to to consider. Okay, so let me unplug this. I'm going to plug in the Procaster so you have a true sound comparison to see if you can tell the difference and make sure to always go back and listen to the XLR version of this to have maybe a sound comparison or listen to all three and see which one you think sounds the best. Okay, so we are now on the Rode Procaster and connected to my PSA1. Now, one thing you'll note is if you're doing a video podcast, this thing is gonna dominate. I mean, this, like you can barely even see me. I'm like hiding behind this thing. So actually I think I just, it just went blurry because I couldn't find my face. Um, but, if you're doing audio only, that's obviously not an issue. So maybe you could kind of position it to where it's somewhat sideways. Uh, no, actually, I can't even turn this. I can't even turn this sideways. So this would be a problem if I was doing a video podcast. This would be an issue. And moreover, I think part of your other challenge would be that if you had. So if I had my mic arm coming from the side, that might also present. So you, the configuration would be a little bit of a challenge. So just keep that in mind. Um, now also. So this is, again, let's talk about Rode because one of the things I've mentioned is that Rode does have tremendous accessories. So this actually, you didn't, I didn't need the shock mount, right? That's an extra component that I, I paid for that did not come with this microphone. This is what comes with this microphone. All right, so this is just, um, just a little hook, if you will, uh, that if I were to plug it, if I were to just go direct here, it would fasten onto my PSA1 and then the mic would just sit inside this little loop and then it would just you know, use this ring at the bottom to just fasten it to the bottom to kind of clamp it in between. And then you plug in the XLR and you're good to go. 
Um, however, we did, we have bought this little tripod stand that's a road product. So you just plug right into this and then you just fasten it the same way. So that could be your travel option. So again, I, you know, as I mentioned, one of the really awesome benefits about all of the road products is that they do have a lot of accessories. Um, and they're really good. They're all really good quality. I don't think I've ever come across a road accessory that was like, meh, you know, like I'm very happy with everything that I bought from them. It's very high quality. Um, however, you know, I think what you have to do is you have to compare the, the, uh, oops, the audio, uh, of each and then decide which one works best for you. And hopefully that's what we're giving you here is an, the, the sound comparison for each. Uh, but also too, you know, keep in mind, you know, whether you do an audio or video podcast, this is definitely something to consider. I mean, this is a big microphone and, you know, I could drop it lower like this and I think it doesn't really affect the sound quality, but it's still like just very sizable, right? Very much taking up a lot of space. Whereas, you know, with my SM7B, usually what I do is I put it over to the side and then that way it's just, you know, kind of, it doesn't cover my whole body and my whole face. Um, so definitely something to consider with your decision-making process. Uh, maybe it would be a little bit different if I sat it on this tripod standing right in front of me, but I, I still think it's going to take up a lot of space in front of me. This is just a very bulky microphone overall. So that's not to dismiss it. I think it's really, really good. I'll probably do another video at some point uh, comparing the Procaster to the Rode Podcaster which is nuts because you have the Procaster, the Podcaster, the Roadcaster. It's hard to keep up with. Uh, but I'll probably do one to compare the Podcaster to the Procaster because that's a relevant comparison, I think, as well. Uh, but overall, just getting back to the point here, I think this is a, a great microphone, uh, specifically if you're doing audio only. I think this is a great microphone. And if you already have, if you want XLR and you want to go into the uh, Rodecaster, if you already have that set up and configuration, I think that'd be good. I don't know why you wouldn't go SM7B and spend the extra money. I really don't, if I'm being totally candid. Uh, but anyways, so I think all in all, if I had to really choose, it's really going to come down to where you are in your journey, but it's hard to beat this microphone, the MB7 pound for pound. I, I really think if I had to choose, and I, I love Rode, I think the only reason you'd go Rode over the MV7 is for the accessories. I really do think that. I really think that's the only viable reason that you would go with the Rode over this microphone. I think you get so much more with this. Uh, I think it's good for intermediate people, good for beginners, good for you know advanced people that want to go XLR into their full setup like I have. It has range, it has versatility, it has amazing sound quality. I, I just, outside of maybe travel and, again, the leather pouch and the accessories, I, I don't really see why you wouldn't go with the MB7. I think it's a great option. Sure, takes the cake always when it comes to audio sound, in my opinion. Uh, so I think you're very, very, very good when it comes to that. Just make sure that if you are going to be traveling with this microphone that you do have the ability to buy something like this with the stand so that you can't take it with your travel and something to protect the microphone. The last thing you want to do is invest $250 and have your microphone break or get damaged in travel. So that is a huge thing to consider, something to look into when it comes to accessorizing your microphone and protecting it in travel. All right, guys, hope you like this video. Make sure to like, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, the algorithm is not helpful at all unless you hit that bell for notifications. Please make sure you do that to see more videos like this. Drop me a comment below. Which one do you think? Do you think my synopsis is, is accurate? Do you think the MV7 wins? Tell me what you think below. Uh, don't forget to check out Startup U. Startup U, get startupu.com. That link is included below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.